yeah, so t I, I tried to do five plugins and then I thought, yeah, it's really not enough. So I'm not going into a lot of detail on each of them, just kind of going through, um, going through a little bit. Let me just bring up my stuff here. Do, 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 do. Where's my notes? All right, cool, notes are up. All right, so as John said, I run an agency here called Chili Bin. Um, some of you may have seen me speak before. Um, but yeah, part of an organizing team here as well. So we don't have a lot of time, so I'll run through this. Essentially, we're, we're going to talk about some plugins. There's over 55,000 plugins in the repository at the moment, as well as a whole bunch of other ones that you can get on GitHub, um, Theme Forest, and there's a whole bunch of other ones you can get from premium, like retailers as well. So just kind of going to run through... Um, some of the ones that I use here. So I use a development agency, so it's probably skewed a little bit more towards that, although I tried to make it a little bit user-focused. Because um, I had a friend call me last week, essentially, and she was just kind of asking what plugins they should install on, a, on, a, on an install. And so I just kind of ran through um, a list that I kind of install on most sites. Um, they're a mixture of sort of helpful tools, I guess. Um, yeah, so I've been building sites commercially for 10 years, so it's skewed kind of that way. Um, if you are looking for other guides, there's always like 10 best plugins for events, 10 best plugins for, uh, for forums or something like that. So wpbeginner.com, and there's a few others uh, where you can get those resources. So the first one I'm going to go through here is called Pretty Links. Um, this is used to kind of beautify links. Sometimes um, it can be used to minify uh, some links as well. It can also be used for affiliates and downloads and things like that. So it can be used to shorten links on using your own domain name so you don't need to have the Google one or Bitly or whatever that may be. So you can import using CSV files and there's a paid upgrade as well which does more advanced tracking. So this is what it looks like on the repository. Um, it's constantly updated, over 200,000 installs. Um, works with the latest WordPresses as well, so it's been tested. So this is an example of a few that I have up on my site. I mainly use it for affiliate links. Um, so if you're coming to me and, you know, I use Active Campaign, so you, there's a little pretty URL at the end there, um, which essentially says, like, chilibin.com.sg forward slash out Active Campaign. So if I'm just writing a link, I don't want to necessarily use my affiliate URL. So I can just go through and send that out. Um, I'm also using it for Calendly, which um, if anyone wants to book a call with me, they can just use that link directly. Not that many people by the looks of it. And then there's a discovery questionnaire and download questionnaire down the bottom as well, which I use as part of my onboarding. Um, we send emails out to people um, once they become a client, which just goes through a whole onboarding process. So there's PDF downloads that you can get that tell you how to build how we build your homepage and things like that. So that's what we use it for. Um, there's a little, I think there's a GIF here. Uh, yeah, so it shows you pretty easy to, to add a link. Add a link, you can do 301s, 302s, and 307s. Um, you enter in the URL without making mistakes. Um, so I'm just doing a link to Google, right? And then you can put in there whatever you want the pretty link to be. I use out, and then you can track these as well in your Google Analytics reports. You can see how many people are actually um, clicking through on that. So pretty simple in terms of setting up those, and we use them a lot. Um, sometimes clients also oh. can't fast forward that, but sometimes clients um, will have like a very long PDF download that just like. WP content forward slash WP uploads 2018 11 and then a long file name. Instead of sending that out to someone, you can just pop it in here and just have, you know, download or something like that. And you can manage it that way. And it's all tracked and things as well. So um, that's a pretty easy one to use. Um, broken link checker. This is a good kind of SEO one as well. Oops, sorry, if you want it. Take that URL photo of it. But I can pop these slides up at the end as well. So what Broken Link Checker does, essentially runs in the back end of your website and goes through and checks all the links, comments, you know, people's URLs, 
that have left comments. It checks through all your posts and things as well. So um, it's not constantly updated because it's not something that necessarily needs to be updated. Last update was about a year ago, um, over 600,000 installs. So it's a, it's a widely used plugin and it's um, built with the latest WordPresses as well. So as you can see there, I just installed this just for a quick demo. So it found four broken links on my site, still going through the 500 URLs. Um, and it will check each link every 72 hours if you want that. You probably don't want to check that often, um, but that's the default anyway. If you have a multi-author blog as well, um, and people are putting in their own content, you can send those uh, even now notifications out to the authors as well as the admin as well. Um, you can also do down the bottom there, apply custom formatting to broken links. So if you want your broken link to show with a strike through or a different type of underline, they can do that as well. It will also, which is quite good, it will also do suggestions um, for alternative to broken links. Now, when I found, when I was going through this before, it mainly found links from uh, the Internet Archive. So it found archive versions of the existing links, which you may want to use or you may not, uh, but it gives you that option anyway. So I think there's a GIF here as well. So out of the 600 that we found, you can either just unlink that and say, okay, well, that's not found anymore. This was from a, a Facebook plugin that I had for Facebook comment URLs. It's not used anymore. So all those were broken links. And the more broken links, obviously, you have the worst result you're going to get for SEO. So bringing all those down um, was pretty simple. You can also check... Um, did I do the check there? Yeah, you can see the details there on the response as well to see why that's why that's failed and make that change. Um, so you can go through that. So that's a good one to have and kind of check in once a week, once every two weeks, um, just to make sure that you're not returning too much bad content for your SEO. Another one, and this is mainly for my OCD because I like to have everything like really neatly organized. In the admin, I hate going into a home page, uh, into a back end of a website, and you see pages all over the place. Um, so instead of using the WordPress default, which is using the page attributes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, as you go down a page, this allows you just to drag and drop each page. It allows you to um, drag and drop in hierarchy as well as sort of um, up and down as well. So. Um, it's been constantly updated, uh, 200,000 installs as well, so. Uh, there's not really too much to say about it, but here's a very basic demo of some SEO work that we've been doing, so we just move that down to the bottom of the page, because I like the home page and the site uh, URL structure to be correct. So you can just drag and drop those into, uh, into order. Pretty simple, that one. Another one is, is for design as well, so design and development. So if you're using any type of uh, you know, retina screens on a MacBook or an iMac or a, you know, any high resolution screens as well, this plugin uses um, uh, an attribute called SRCset, S -R -C set, uh, which is supported by WordPress anyway, but what it does is it just allows you to go through and, you know, show two different uh, versions of the same image. You might not want to necessarily show a 6,000 pixel image across the site because it's going to slow your site down. But this will create high DPI um, images as well. So um, it's been updated. It's not used on a lot of sites, mainly because it's a, a little bit of extra work, making sure you've got all those assets sorted out. Um, and this is how it looks in the back end. So these are the original images that you have and then you can replace those retina sizes and, and other sizes as you go through it as well. So it gives you a, a guide there on what the full size image should be. So if it's you know, 1800 by 1200, just make sure you're saving your Photoshop files or your JPEGs at double that resolution. So you can um, drag and drop those into place there. Um, a spam plugin that we like to use, I don't really, the, the ASCII met one's okay, but it's a little bit, um, oops, that's duplicate post. Um, that should be zero spam, which looks like this. This one, um, it hasn't really been updated lately, two years ago, but it still runs fine. Um, and I prefer it to the ASCII met plugin just because the whole uh, sign up process can be a little bit frustrating. 
um, is set and forget. You know, you don't really need to do too much with it at all. Does comments, um, just kind of set and forget. Uh, no capture. It does moderation cues, um, but essentially it just disappears and you don't have to worry about it. Um, it's not kind of your users don't have to deal with it and then you don't have to deal with it as an admin as well. And then there's logging tools and things like that. Um, the link here before, now something I think should be in core because I use it all the time and it's annoying having to install a plugin, but any kind of site work that you're doing, you can go through and just duplicate the post. So if you're building out pages and pages, it's just easier to duplicate that, change that, uh, and then edit that rather than starting a new page and copying in all your content, especially if you're doing like a templated page or a post or you have a certain format to your posts, then you can just bring that through as well. Um, one I use on pretty much all of my sites, I don't do a lot of blogging work, so we use disabled comments just because it's a part of the WordPress admin we don't need to use. And by turning it off, you also turn off all the spam that you may get as well. So this one, um, one, one million installs, so it's pretty active, um, but it disables it globally. So by WordPress, you can go into the admin and turn off, turn off, turn off on each post. This will actually do it across the whole site. Um, so it's not a selective tool. Um, and you can sort of install this and then get rid of it and you don't have to worry about it again. Turning them back on, you'll have to install the plugin and then enable them again. A uh, developer tool that I use a lot is Better Search Replace. Now, we use this when we move sites from domain to another domain or if you're replacing your URL say, you know, like, the, um, uh, like the, the link checker that we had, if we had a bulk list, list of URLs, Google had changed the URL, for example, we could go through and change from google.com.sg to google.com.au or something like that. So we can just easily run through here. It's my team, Delicious Brains. They do some really good work. They have a managed DB, um, migrate DB tool as well, which is great for local development. But, you know, 600,000 installs, pretty popular plugin. Essentially, in the back end, you'll go through and you'll search for the URL that you want to replace. So if it's like a dev environment, to be domain name .dev or .test, um, and then you replace it with domain name .com. You would run through and you can select any of the tables. So if you just want to replace it in comments, or you can um, control click and select them all. There's a couple of options down the bottom probably just make sure you have a backup first and then run as a dry run. If you run as a dry run, it will essentially go through and say, okay, I've found 25 replacements that need to be made. We've made 10 replacements. Um, if you're looking to add an SSL certificate, this plugin won't do the SSL plugin uh, certificate for you. What it will do is make sure that all your resources are served over HTTPS. So that's what it looks like, uh, has over a million installs, really simple to set up, essentially one or two clicks and then you're done. You do have to make sure that you have this SSL certificate first, otherwise you'll end up breaking stuff. But it will check to see if you have your uh, SSL certificate, it will fix your, some of your mixed content as well, so if you're serving any HTTP links, it will remove HTTP and just serve the... Um, just serve it from there, and you can also make it in a HTTP, uh, HT access redirect as well, just so that um, Apache is dealing with it rather than your server PHP code needs to run it. So that one is pretty simple. One for that I like to install on my client sites because they like to install, uh, upload five or six megabyte images, and then wonder why their sites are slow. This one. Um, and there's a couple other popular tools around it. This one is quite simple. Um, and essentially what you do is you go through and select a couple of settings, basically a maximum image size. It essentially crops down to that maximum Im image size. So uh, a few hundred thousand installs there. But I mean, these are pretty old settings. You wouldn't really want to have these anymore. But let's say you look at probably a 2000 by 2000 pixel size. Um, Images into your meter library can be different, and then you might have um, images into your theme could be different. So you might want to have um, 
a 3200 pixel retina image that goes across a wide banner in your actual theme in the customizer but your posts you may want to limit to seven or eight hundred pixels because they're going to be in a short um, in a short thing so you make sure you check those settings it does bmp to jpeg but i don't know who uses bmps anymore um, select all the options that will run through it runs through 250 images at a time and then runs through again so you might have to run it a few times but it's there so while you use this it doesn't really do any additional compression all it does is resize the image so there's there's uh, plugins like short pixel short pixel and imageify um, which do that as well so they do the compression they send your image across to another server compress it and then send it back um, they also do this um, compression as well but I like this um, and just let the other tool handle the, the compression. And that's it. Wow, I ran through that pretty quickly. There's 10 plugins. Questions? See, I made the time, John. <laughs> yeah. yeah, disabled comments. Yeah, so you can do it post by post. Yeah, but it still leaves it in the dashboard. So this actually removes the whole functionality from the dashboard. So if you set up a new site and you disable the WordPress one from day one, then that's fine. Yeah. Is the thing of the plugin as something that if you're building websites regularly, you just drop it in? Start and then it's done. It's oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. It's just the default. I don't build many blog sites, and if I do, I'll probably use something like Discuss, which is a better commenting platform, which allows for two fa um, open. What is it? Open ID. Open ID. Uh, it allows for that. So it also works on um, the different post types as well. So attachment plug it, attachment comments, and things like that are a bit harder to turn off. But yeah, easy to set up. I have a question. Sure. Um, so when developers, they create websites and pass to the some clients, some developers, they like to install this developer plugin that so-called like, uh, uh, limits uh, some features to the administrator so that they don't accidentally delete plugins or something. Yep. Is that recommended or that is really uh, for case uh, basis? There's the, the way that I do it is I create them an admin install, which is one. And then I'll create everyone else an editor install, okay. essentially. So day to day, they'll get an editor. And then they'll have an admin, you know, if, if something goes wrong. But realistically, we give them an editor with a few upgraded permissions. There's a few things, appearance widgets, and there's a couple other things, menus they can't um, access as an editor. So a couple of those things that we change and give them access to. Um, but it's their website. So they've paid for it, so they need full access to it. Otherwise, you know, you sort of holding everything. If I get run over by a bus, then, you know, they don't have a website, right? Which, um, which won't happen. But, you know, you always like to give full access back to the client. There's, there's a few plugins called admin, adminizer and a few things like that where you can remove certain elements. But I find it just gets a bit frustrating to manage that. And certain plugins do things in different ways. So it can become so tricky. Uh, upgrade the editor role instead of downgrading the administrator. Yeah, there's also a, another plugin called wor uh, webs uh, uh, Website Administrator Pro, I think. Um, Webmaster, Webmaster Admin Pro or something, and it creates like that upgraded admin editor, creates it for you, and there's a pro version of that as well. But yeah, that's one way of doing it by using the webmaster tool. There's another way of doing that without actually using any plugins. So if you install a multi-site request, yep. by default the network admin only allows, uh, you, you are only allowed to install plugins and network admin create users as a network admin as well. Yep. So you could just limit all of the client users to a specific site, the start site, and then you have the control to network admin. Mm -hmm. okay. That's if you're using multi-site. Okay, you can, but there's some plugins that don't run well, and if you then want to migrate away from multi-site to a single-site install, that's a whole nother. Uh, or migrate into, uh, so if you built it in a single-site install, like I did last week, and then the client said, no, we have a multi-site install, 
then we have to migrate a single into a multi, which we did. Um, I just made them buy a plugin. So. Um, that's it. Anything else, really? That's a good one. I think that's it, really. So I'll wrap up, and you catch me out um, after if you want to sort of go through anything in more detail. But um, yeah, my name's Sean, and I run Chilibin here. So cool. I'll see you guys around. <laughs>